Welcome to Span Reads, not your typical rereads podcast, a 17 shard series where we reread the Cosmere and are giant nerds about it. Unlike the traditional reread style, we won't be going through each book chapter by chapter, but instead looking at different themes and the placement of the books within the wider Cosmere. Each Span Reads series will bring you four episodes. The first three are reactions and retrospectives, character relationships, and the magic system used in the story. All three of these will be uh, spoiled for that particular book and any prior books in the series. Then we will do a fourth episode to cap things off with a full spoilers, Cosmia wide episode. Today, we will be talking about our retrospective thoughts and reactions from rereading the book. So joining me today is Mish. Hello, I'm Mish, Michelle, uh, on the forums and pretty much everywhere on the internet. I'm First Rainbow Rose. And next we have Ian. Hey, I'm Weary Writer. And lastly, we have got Rosemary. Hello, I am also known as K-Myth. And of course, we need to introduce our ho- have our host <laughs> introduce herself. Yes, yes, who are you? And I am Jesse. I go by Lady Lameness on the forums and discords. This will be our retrospectives and reaction episode where we discuss what we remember from before we reread, what our favorite scenes are, what we uh, forgot about, what we were looking forward to, just kind of our general reactions to the book as a whole. Once upon a time, there was a man named Wax, and he chased criminals, and then his wife got killed because of bad happened. Wax, after the death of his beloved wife, moves to the city to take over the family business, more or less. Become lord of the house. Lord of the house. Mm -hmm. And he's trying to be good at being a lord of the house, and he's less good at that than he wanted to be. He learns, and then things start happening. He learns about this uh, this bandit group that's stealing things and no one can figure out how. He's like, I am tempted to look into this, but no, I mustn't. I, I have to be responsible now or my butler will be very disappointed in me. So things go on. His buddy Wayne shows up and starts waning all over the place. And <laughs> and things starts to ha- start to happen. And he starts to investigate. And then his would-be fiancé gets kidnapped by the bandits, so now obviously he has to get involved. Things happen. Action. There's shootout at a wedding. It was Misha's wedding. They continue to go and investigate, and Wax's fiancé's illegitimate sister is helping, because that's how she do. They wind up investigating to the point where Wax realizes he knows who the per- who the big bad guy is, and it's his old ally, what Miles, who used to be a lawkeeper, but is now being a bad guy and this is very confusing and concerning because miles is a scary dude excitement continues to happen wax gets the crap beaten out of him as you do and eventually they are victorious and wax did such a good job that the city says hey you're like kind of be a consultant on things now and he's like sure that's cool everyone lives happily ever after except for lessie who is dead so When was the last time you guys read Alloy of Law before this? Like, how long has it been at this point? For me, it had only been, like, maybe a couple of years. uh, But the last time I had read it had been the graphic audio version. So I've I've gone through it both in text and graphic audio several times now. I'm pretty sure the last time I read it was in the lead up to Shadows of Self being released. So it's it's been a hot minute since I I've read all of Era Three, uh, Era Two. <laughs> wow, I haven't read Era, Era Three. three. Yet. <laughs> I haven't How quite do I get my hands yet. on that? Are are you a time traveler that you didn't decide to share with us? Going back, you know, doing a Merlin type thing here. The world may never know. <laughs> I honestly don't remember. Probably lead up to uh, Shadows and Bands, but I don't remember honestly. I read Era Two in 2019 and i don't remember exactly when in 2019 but i do remember being on a flight from california to australia reading one of the three books and i was half lucid at the time because i was so (laughs) tired 
because that's a 15 hour flight and it just feels like days but i i just remember everyone being around me asleep and then i was that person who had the light on because i'm like i'm going to read now mm-hmm. <laughs> and you can't you, stop me you fell into the classic brandon trap of you want to stop ha 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 you thought he never stops writing i mean that's a good thing for him. yeah well and you never stop reading are you kidding it's, it's like hey, best thing in the world yeah i think the point the fact that none of us well three of us can't quite remember the last time we read it <laughs> means it's it, it's it's been quite some time Definitely. I mean, so it, it was really nice to reading. come back to it yeah. I've been through it so many times, though, because I've sifted through it for many details in fan fiction that is not going to be fan fiction anymore. But um, it, Alloy of Law is particularly special to me because it is the book that bit me and flipped my the switch in my brain from just being a reader to being a writer. Okay. Um, all of the stuff that I have written thus far can all be traced back to this thing, Konami coding my brain. That's so cool. I don't know exactly what it was about it, but it just... A certain je ne sais quoi. Yes. Well, if you've read it so much, k I am very interested to know if there were things that you forgot that came up in this reread. There were a few things. Um, mostly minor things or things I never caught, like... Uh, Wax talking himself into reading the broadsheets after Wayne's visit, you know, like, oh, a little reading couldn't hurt. I need to be informed, right? Like, yeah, I forgot that little <laughs> detail. Um, I also forgot that the maps, Naz has a, has, has a note in there, but none of them are salty. It's like, really? Where, where are my sarcastic comments on the maps? Hello, Naz. <laughs> what are you doing? Oh, right. Because this was very early on in 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 the cosmere writing and um and then there was a little clue that i had missed the other times that i've read this book of where wax says you know my uncle's library has had extensive genealogical resources it was a hobby of his it's like i missed that how many times have i missed that and realizing now that is how he even knew to, to start doing what he did in this book. I picked up on that comment myself. I was like, uh ha ha, I see. And then, and then there's one other thing, and this isn't something so much that I forgot, is the fact that when I first, my previous reads have always been on my paperback copy or the graphic audio copy. This is the first time I had actually read the hardback copy that I have, and it must be a first printing because it's got the old misprint where brandon mixed up cadmium and chromium (laughs) and i'm like wait a minute that's not right (laughs) nice i didn't pick up on the the genealogy thing at all so thank you for pointing that out because yep that that went past me Uh, what i like about that is like it's never acknowledged in the books so it is so easy to miss it because it's it's Mm -hmm. it's Something you can only really pick out on rereads. Uh, that's why Brandon is a genius, is he has those subtle little things that when you're rereading, you're like, oh, what? And part of it is from just how careful, you know, a planner he is when it comes to his writing. He knows where he's going with things. And if you know where you're ending and you have all the structure put together, then it's much, much easier to see these little clues in because you you already know where you're going mm-hmm. uh, brandon's use of foreshadowing is really great to see and really impressive and yeah definitely the rewrite like oh my god i can't believe that you put all of these things in and you, you just won't pick up on them the first time and and the second time through you're like oh this is it it's like reading a different book almost like uh mm-hmm. It's still the same story, but it's so different the second time around because you're picking up on those things. And then when you read it like a third time, it's like, okay, now you know the first reaction, the subtle hints that Brandon's put in, and everything finally can come together. Even then, like, there's things that we miss, like, on the rereads as well and don't pick up Mm -hmm. for 
a while. This is quite a thing that I forgot, but I do remember last time I read Alloy before this, the shootout at uh, Misha's wedding. I got to the end of it and thought, this was so violent <laughs> and so many people like, killed and it's this giant shootout and the first time i read it i it just flew past me as, as this this is fine because brandon's writing a light-hearted western book so of course there's shootouts but nobody really thinks about like all the people that are killed and the second time i was like wow okay this is very violent so th this time going into it i had that thought in my head and i've just like flip-flopped back to the other way i was like oh it wasn't too bad so this is probably a good time very relevant to explain how Josh and I actually found out about Alloy of Law. So we got married in October of 2010. Invited Brendan to our wedding. You know, he was a friend. He actually is the reason that we got together. Um, he's a good matchmaker. What was it? September or no, October, November timeframe. Oh, I guess it would have been November, whatever. Uh, Brendan was doing his Wellers pre-sign for the books for Towers of Midnight that was going to go out. And uh, Josh and I help out with that. We go, we sort the books, feed them to him, sort them and everything. It's perfectly quiet in the back room of Weller Books. He's been signing his books. We've been feeding them. And all of a sudden he goes, I guess I should apologize. And I'm like sitting next to him, handing him books. And I'm like, apologize for what and he goes for shooting up your wedding <laughs> <laughs> i don't know I, no. maybe he should apologize for making you guys sliverists <laughs> i didn't know but like legitimately josh and i were like what the what wait what <laughs> yeah legitimately how we found out about the fact that our wedding was going to be in there um i mean brandon had mentioned a couple of times before that because my name is michelle and it's the french pronunciation my name fits in perfectly normally with the misborn setting so he was like yeah it, it, you know it makes sense and i'm like no i want to be in, from nalthus double consonants apostrophes let me be from nalthus which has led to this whole headcanon. But we're not going to go into that because it's personal headcanon. <laughs> but yeah, so that's the fun story of how we found out that uh, our wedding was going to be featured in the Alloy of Law is Brandon apologizing for shooting up our wedding. Just imagine the way that he would say that as well. Just like his, his straight, like friendly tone and then like, and now I do something else. It's like, wait, wait, no, you can't just say that and then like move on <laughs> oh yeah no it was just for shooting up your wedding and then just goes back you know he <laughs> mind you he is doing this as he's doing this he's sitting there signing his name to the books signing his name to the books i guess i should apologize for what for shooting up your wedding what what <laughs> And like I can just picture like the little smirk he had on his oh, face. Yes. As, like, oh yes, like he was yes. doing it. Oh yes, there was that Brandon smirk for sure. Yes, yeah. yes, smug boy. I think with all of the the live streams he's doing with signing books, it just makes it so much easier to imagine as well. Well, f for me, it's because I I did a lot of transcribing words of Brandon, so I have list like even before he started doing the live streams i listened to several hundred hours of him interacting with fan so like the fact i've met him a couple times it's like i know you far better than you know me this is a little weird <laughs> no and it's funny for me to listen to the wedding scene because it's like the bride's mother fainted and i'm like i can actually picture my mother fainting and it's like no maybe kind of but no. <laughs> uh, I actually have the problem with Alloy of Lore, and I actually have this with Era 2 in general. I don't know if it's just I haven't read it uh, enough times, but I have so much, so many problems just keeping the plot in my head. And then I go into the books, and I'm like, something, something, Western, like, pow, 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 train. 
And that was that's like the only things I remember a lot of the time with the plot of Alley of Law. And reading it, I'm like, oh yeah, I remember this. I remember this. But it, it's like an adventure all over again. I, yeah. I have friends who have that same exact issue. Like they they remember reading the book, remember enjoying it, but don't remember what happened. And I think part of that is chucked up to the fact that the pacing in Alloy is very weird. Because yes. Brandon yeah. first wrote it as a short story, and then he expanded it into a novel. And mm-hmm. for him, it's a pretty short novel anyway, so it just all whips by so fast that you're like, wow, that was really fun. What just happened? It, <laughs> it's like going through a super fast amusement park ride. You know you had a really good time, but you can't quite remember what just happened. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I'm the opposite. Like, I remember stories, like, very well. So it's like I there were a couple of scenes that is as I was listening to them, it's like, OK, yeah, I remember this scene, but it's not something I actually remembered outside mm-hmm. of it. So it's like the scene where uh, Wayne goes to the constabulary to interview oh, the captured so funny. <laughs> person. And it's just like, OK, yeah, like I, I forgot that. That is and it's classic social engineering right there. Too. Oh, it's such oh, good yeah. social engineering. Yeah. Some of the scenes on the train where he's fighting, like I remember Wax fighting Miles, but there were there were just like some tangential details like around that, like how they all like jump off the train and like all of that. I didn't really remember, but like I the beginning and the end, I had like very clearly in, yep. in my head and meeting Renette. I I remembered like the big beats, the big, big beats. I remember. Mm -hmm. I remembered Lissy's death, of course. I remembered Mm -hmm. the wedding, biased. Um, I remembered the train. Uh, I remembered uh, Renette. And then I remembered the ending and the way that the ending, the resolution with Marassi, Mm -hmm. but like the intimate little details here and there were things that I didn't remember as well. I definitely remembered uh, the ending with Marisai and like her allomancy because it's just such a beautifully crafted way to defeat Miles as a villain. Mm-hmm. Like I love how Brandon set him up as a villain and had all of these stipulations of like, you just can't kill him in any of these ways. Like, what are you going to do? And it is like the little things that were put in throughout the story, talking about um, Marisai and like how she didn't think her allomancy was useful. Mm-hmm. And then mm-hmm. without her, they never would have been able to capture oh, him. No. And it, it was just oh, yeah. so perfectly done. Like, I, I remembered that scene. I was looking forward to that scene so much. Mm-hmm. I was reading it and Eric started talking to me. I was like, no, 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 not now, not now. I gotta finish <laughs> reading this scene. I'm right at this bit. And he's like, oh yeah, no, that's completely fine. Go back to it. Fun fact, when I first read Alley of Law many years ago, I didn't love it. Like Westerns just generally aren't my favorite genre, but throughout like the numerous rereads and as we've got the rest of era too like alloy has grown, grown on me quite a bit but it's i do really love the whole climax fight because it's like the, the capturing um with marasi's um speed bubble is perfect but my favorite part is the conversation between yes. wax and harmony it's yes in D D, some of my favorite classes are like clerics and warlocks where it's like you have this like higher power that you're having to interact with and so getting that in mistborn and sazed getting to be snarky at wax is just perfect it's you're like welcome. <laughs> it's, yeah it's like the, you're welcome it's like or uh, i sent them wax to you at, yeah, exactly. It's like Max. Like, why didn't you send help? It's like I did. I sent you, didn't I? It's just like yes, yes. yes. Yep. you're the help yep. man. I always mm-hmm. forget that that happens in Alloy, and I get to it. I'm like, oh my gosh, I forgot that Harmony's in Alloy. Yeah, <laughs> and it's such a good conversation. You're totally right. No, I, I love that conversation so much. And because Very strange like, conversation. 
Yes. It is. And like <laughs> because like we know Sawzed from era one. It's like we spent a lot of time with him. And so it's it, yes, like he is this god, but it's also it's like, oh, we know him. We know him. It's like seeing an old friend again. It the tone. Like Sazed Sazed messed me up. Anyway, <laughs> Sazed uh has such a distinct tone. Like when I was when Brandon was releasing the previews for book three, he released the epigraphs, but he didn't tell anybody who they were. And I read the very first one and was like, oh no, it says it. Because he has such a distinct way, especially the I think. Yeah. The way he says I think at the end. I've realized I ended up picking that up. So you will I. find in my sentences yeah. I will end with the thought of, you know, ba 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 I think, or ba 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 it seems, or whatever. But it's such a distinct way of talking. And he came back to that so perfectly and says that you just instantly can hear that tone and that rhythm to the way he talks. It's fascinating. Wayne, just waning all over the yes. place. Yes. classic. I love the banter in these books. It's such good banter and you can just feel the, the years behind yeah. these characters' relationships. But honestly. Oh, and the usage of High Imperial. <laughs> Hi, yes. Imperial. Yes. Thank you, Spook. That's a good joke that is going to last forever. Yeah. No, Way Wayne, actually, I was reluctant to restart Alboy. Like, I actually had to force myself to an extent to restart it because I always remember it being just kind of a dry book. You know, it's fun, it's popcorn, but it's boring at first. And I remember going, uh, okay, I have to do this. And it was a little bit of a rough start, but as soon as Wayne shows up, yep. the book picks up and it actually, Wayne is what makes that book engaging to begin with. Yeah. And then what? once you fall yeah, in what? love with uh, Wayne, you then learn to fall in love with Wax. Yeah, yeah. Wax needs Wayne as his balance yeah. mm -hmm. and vice versa. Because yeah, like, originally, like, the main character was just Wayne, and I, I believe Melon, but Wayne needs the straight man to play off of. Yeah, no, and it, if you, I just was like, okay, yep, Leslie's dead, yep, it's sad. And then Wayne shows up, and it, the only way to explain it is it's almost a Wizard of Oz thing. Mm. You go from like this sepia tone, this is life, to Wayne shows up, and everything just starts popping and you have these moments and you have this thing that engages you in the story. So Wayne is probably my favorite. <laughs> I definitely had that as well, like literally down to the same scene. I, I like the book, but definitely starting it. I was like, yeah, okay, okay. We're just kind of moving through. And then like the scene like with Steris and Ray Wayne and like uh, Lord Harms, like Steris' yeah. father, like, that's the exact scene that I'm like, okay, now I'm invested in this book. But for me, it was also Steris. Like, Steris, like, made such an impact oh. that I was like, I want to read more of you. And I did really like Wayne in that scene as well. And I think, like, the, when he turns up, like you are saying, like, it changes the entire dynamic in the book. And that's a very good thing and very needed. But yeah, I had the exact same experience. I think, I think the prologue helps this book a lot by modulating that early tone a little bit because mm. you get to have wax playing off of Lessie. And yes, it ends in heartbreak and, and sadness, but at least you you can set the tone. And I think that's a lot of why he needed that prologue is because he needed a way to set the tone at the beginning of the book and just starting at chapter one wouldn't have done it mm -hmm. uh, because it would have just been like, hello, I am depressed. <laughs> I, Ash is not falling anymore, but you wouldn't know it from the way I feel. And by putting the prologue in, he was able to set this adventure idea, but also with those under underpinnings of this is serious business, kids. There is the problem with the prologue, though, where like you go into this book, you're like, cool, male character, female character, female character immediately dies to 
mm. push along the male yeah. character's story. So, like, mm. uh, that that does also set a bad tone to it. it it's but, a like, trope you can kind that, of move past it. It's, it's yeah, just like it's a trope that Brandon has leaned on more than once, where he's had, but it's usually not been on screen. Um, but. No. It and I'm glad to see that he's mostly moved away from using that trope. The last time I read these books, like I was in my early to mid twenties, and like Wax is in his early forties. I'm like, oh, that's so old. And now I'm in my late twenties. I'm like, yeah, it's really not that old. It's like <laughs> yeah, the I guys am, from Supernatural older. are in their early forties. Yeah. Like it's I'm, like I'm older yeah. than Wax was in this book. Yeah, it's like it's like not that old. Like. It's like what the difference a few years can make in your perception of age. I think also like early 20s, like say if you are 21 and Wax is like 46, like that's over double your life. Mm -hmm. So it it makes sense, but you're completely right. I I, I had that as well. Yeah, part of that is like actually having a, a real adult person job and working with people that are Wax's age. And it's like, yeah, you're not old at all. Like you're just a a person. Like I'm 35 and literally until you said that, it didn't make sense to me to say, "Oh, yeah, no, he's not that even now it's weird because I'm like he's how old in comparison with me?" What? <laughs> but he's an adult. I don't know what that's like. I, <laughs> he's a real adult. I'm not a real adult. Yeah. I've not hit that right. point yet. None of us ever really get there. We're all just I think that's it. the whole way through our lives. So thank you for watching, everyone. Uh, you can find us at 17shard.com for your news, discussions, theories, and fun that you could ever want. You can find us on Facebook, Twitter, SoundCloud. You can leave us a review on iTunes, and you can subscribe on youtube will support us on patreon see you next time guys bye bye, bye.